In today's video, we're going to be trying this brand called Be Ready, which is a brand available in Olive Young in Korea. I also think it's on the Olive Young Global Store. But basically, this is probably Korea's top men's brand right now. There's a few, but this one definitely probably it's probably because of marketing because I see it everywhere, especially when it first came out and all the beauty YouTubers were talking about is even the female beauty YouTubers were talking about it. I think they started out with like this liquid foundation in a tube and then they came with a like cushion. Those both did really, really well. And now they have like this whole lineup of products. I have a friend that like knows people up in there up at a more Pacific, so I was like, send your girl some stuff. Cause I'm a boy and I'd love to try your products. Oh! He needs some milk. Also, they made a music video featuring their brand models Grey, Loco, and Code Kunst, and it's so catchy lol. So they're kind enough to send me basically all their shit. So uh we're gonna try it out today. Looking at the global store in all of young though, they don't have everything. It's missing a lot of stuff like their sunscreen. Oh, actually, this one, their their sun base fresh for heroes is sold out. So I guess the girls are into it. With a name like Fresh, I expect some kind of like light gel kind of texture, you know, the kind that quickly dries. I never really, a lot of the stuff that will have the word like fresh on it, I don't really like for myself because I have dehydrated skin and stuff like this will feel nice and light, but the inside of my skin, oh, by the way, I only use toner. I feel like stuff like that kind of dries my skin out, like the inside of my skin. So I definitely need to use a few layers of toner before I use stuff like that. Cause I feel like it's the kind where at first it's like, oh, it feels light and moisturizing, but then later on, my skin will start to look cracked and dry and like fine lines start to come up. But this one is actually, it feels a little bit thicker than other products that have the word fresh in them. A lot of guys in Korea these days wear makeup, but it's very light basic makeup, like maybe a little bit of BB cream or like some light foundation and uh, maybe eyebrows. But like if you saw my video with Song Hun, I just thought it was interesting because he's talking about how uh, it's pretty much just guys in Seoul. Guys that are not in Seoul, usually they do not wear makeup. Um, I can see how this type of product would be appealing for dudes because uh, it's nothing too heavy or crazy. And honestly, it's sunscreen. So if it can encourage guys to use more sunscreen, that's always a good thing, right? It definitely feels thick enough to kind of replace both moisturizer and sunscreen, I feel like, um, if you don't like putting too much stuff. So that's why I used earlier, that's why I just used toner because I'm thinking in my head, if I'm like a dude that wants something quick and easy or anybody in general, whether you're a boy or a girl and you just want something quick and easy, I do like products like this. Uh, that's why I like a lot of the sunscreens that come out these days because in America especially, you definitely would have to use separate moisturizer and separate sunscreen because moisturizers that have sunscreen in them don't have a lot of SPF in them, but this one being SPF 50 PA quadruple plus, um, I think is nice and the fact that it's uh, a good texture for actual moisture. We'll see though. We'll see how it acts on my, my skin. Now next up is the Be Ready Blue Foundation. Now originally there was the Be Ready Level Up Foundation and that did really well. I saw all the Korean beauty YouTubers talking about it and it got really popular especially because at the time this brand came out it was like the height of COVID and all that so everyone had to wear masks. That foundation also their cushion were well known for being kind of transfer proof against masks but they came out with a new one to kind of address the concerns and like cons of like the original foundation. It's supposed to offer optimal coverage with a light thin fit that adheres to skin for a flawless look. It does have SPF of 27 PA double plus. They said the original one got number one in like the Huahe Beauty Awards. Huahe is a originally it's an application in Korea where you can go in and like look up any skincare or makeup product and you can look at all the list of ingredients and next to each ingredient in the list it has like a rating for how much or how little it could cause irritation in the skin and it got really really popular and then later on they started adding like top charts and shit like that but now it's become a very commercialized uh app to be honest all of young and apps like that a brand can easily pay to get to number one on those charts so i don't necessarily believe shit like that they added a pump to this one uh because the original was just a two a squeeze tube um and a neutral base tone which i find the most appealing because i've been on beauty subreddit a lot lately and a lot of the people asking for help with finding foundation colors shit in america is so damn yellow these days and i remember back when i was in college i had i, I thought everything was just too pink and as you know beauty youtube developed and things like that beauty youtube became popular and everyone was complaining how there's not enough yellow foundation now there's like a massive overcorrection I feel like and now every foundation especially in the west is so fucking yellow or orange but I was swatching a lot of this stuff and there's five shades of this foundation this is the lightest one and then even their darkest one has a very neutral base which I find very appealing because I feel like having a neutral base works a little bit better for a more a variety of skin tones rather than something that's super yellow because not everyone is super super yellow or at least with neutral 
foundations, it kind of has more of a balance between all of the kind of colors in foundation. This is the first shade Stone. I think the names are so cute. Apparently all the shades of this, this foundation are named after different guys that work at the company or that helped make this brand. Or was it like friends of the owners? I don't know. This is the second shade, Ryan. That one actually looks like it fits really well. But looking at the first one, Stone, I'm really liking how it's not looking too yellow because I noticed a lot of lighter foundations look so, even in Korea, they're starting to look really yellow. Almost lemony. It's the third shade, Jeffrey. But you guys, they feel so nice and smooth and light. To me, they feel very high-end. This is number four, Damien. Usually when you can get beauty advice for men in Korea, they always assume that most guys are darker than women in Korea, like their skin tones. So um, they always suggest uh, darker colors. I think it's a little weird though, because I do think there are like lighter skinned males in Korea, as well as obviously there being darker skinned males. But it is nice that um, finally they do have more of like an option. Not even, even if you're not a guy, I feel like you never see these colors in other brands in Korea. So that is definitely a plus. There are actually a few, but not as easily available in places like Olive Young. And it being an Olive Young, it's super widely available because it's fucking Olive Young everywhere. I remember back in the day, when all of young nobody went there and people would just go to like the individual brand shops but now everyone loves going to places where there's like multiple brands in one shop which is what all of young is so now all of young is like the number one place to go for beauty shopping for everyone here in korea and it's the last shade um owen so here are the five shades and i think they look really great actually they're very neutral it, it's probably just me being biased because i prefer using neutral foundations on like everyone including myself also i feel like people with neutral skin tones are probably the most confused when it comes to fighting foundations because in a day and age where every foundation is like yellow if you have very strong yellow undertones I, i'm sure it's easy to find a foundation for you but people with more neutral skin tones we get really confused about like are we olive like what like are we warm cool so it's nice to see a range of foundations that are these look like skin, like real proper skin tones. There are other foundations I see and I'm like, is that a real foundation color? The formula itself feels super light and airy. So I do think you need some level of control. And with a lot of guys, they kind of just want to slap it on and go. And actually, you know, I don't even think that's exclusive to guys. I feel like a lot of people just want to slap their foundation on and go. But because this is so high coverage, you do kind of want to be careful because I feel like it can easily look really cakey. Remember, when you're swatching on your face, it's best to swatch here and um, using a really thin light layer. You don't want to like swipe just the opaque color on. I've been more on TikTok lately and um, that's one of my videos that I posted recently is how to swatch your foundations properly like if you're testing it in store. Because I see a lot of people on beauty reddit swatching so thick and so it's hard to see how the foundation actually looks against their skin. It's literally you see their skin and you just see the foundation color. So here's the first three shades. I'm thinking the second shade might be the closest. What do you think? I'm gonna apply the second foundation uh, in Ryan. They actually do have this puff. They do sell this as a set. It's actually made in China too, which it's basically this puff um, that blew up in Korea because one of my favorite YouTubers, she's a professional makeup artist in Korea. She did a collaboration with the Tool Lab and came out with this puff. So that was really popular. So now they came out with this version. And it, honestly, I, I really just think that all these brands that come out with tools and sponges and stuff, they all come from the same factory in China. Because if you go on AliExpress, you can find exactly the same tools. Even American brands. I see a lot of like rare beauty, like a lot of the tools I've seen on AliExpress and Amazon. This is just slightly bigger, which I think is more convenient. But it's one of those harder sponges, so you do need to wet this. Dude, it got way fucking bigger. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now this is the type of puff I would not pump out foundation and pick it up with this and then apply it on. It will eat up too much product and it'll just have like a horrible time. This is the type of puff that will help press foundation into the skin. So normally I'd use like a brush or I'd even use like a spatula to apply this type of foundation. This is actually the perfect type of foundation for using with a spatula, this kind of thing. But again, we're like, oh, I'm a dude and I'm just gonna like make this quick and easy. I pump some out on my hand, spread it out like this. And with my flower nose, girl's chocolate shop mirror. Um, you could either kind of like dot it on or you can kind of just swipe it on really. Remember, trying to keep it more so here because that's where most you need most of the coverage. I mean, unless you have like acne here, I guess. And then just tap that in. If you do it this way, applying it directly onto your skin first and then using the puff, whether it be a puff or a brush, and using it just to press the foundation and set it into the skin, it eats up way, way, way less foundation. It makes it much easier to clean afterwards. Oof, this feels really nice. It's not too glowy. It's like natural, but usually when people think of natural looking foundations, they think like glowy stuff, but this is like a natural 
soft velvety matte that actually looks like skin. Usually the foundations that I tend to use every day or most of the time, if you see me swatch it on my face, it almost looks like it'd be too light. But once it's applied everywhere, it, it matches like my neck and face. Because there are multiple colors going on in my face, it kind of matches more towards the lighter, like around my eyes. The skin on my forehead and around my mouth area, it looks a little bit darker. So against that, it looks a little bit lighter. But once it's all over, it's the right color. I think this particular color kind of matches well more towards the more darker parts of my face, the more uneven parts of my face. Holy shit, it like took away all the redness. And I actually didn't even use that much. And I feel like if you're skilled enough and you can use a spatula, you can use even less. Okay, be ready. Can't put too much on though because um, they do have a concealer, which I do want to try, so. I still, a little bit part of me, it almost feels like if I don't moisturize well with like a toner and like hydrate the inside of my skin, it's gonna look cracked and dry around here. Hopefully it doesn't do that. Cause it has like almost like long wear feel, but not like the paint kind of long wear. Next up we have the Be Ready Magnetic Fitting Concealer for heroes, whatever that means. Just like the foundation, it comes in five shades. They pretty much correspond to exactly the foundation color. These look so fucking good. What I appreciate is the fact that the colors in the concealers match exactly the colors in the foundation. A lot of brands in the West, they assume you want to use your concealer to like highlight your face and stuff like that. So if you have like this foundation color in the foundation, if you get the exact same number in the concealer, it'll be lighter because they think you want to highlight and stuff. But girl, I want to use the concealer to conceal. So then you need to go darker to look for a concealer that matches the foundation to cover blemishes. And then I guess use the lighter one to, for the highlight, but not everybody wants to do that. So I'm going to use Number two, Ryan, to cover anything left. And just like the foundation, this shit is also really light. And the applicator is really, really nice. Look at that. It's like this flexible kind of tip. And it goes on so, it adheres so well. Like trying it on my hand, it really settles it. Not, this sounds really bad. It settles itself into the lines, but not in like an ugly way. It actually melts into the lines and covers stuff like that. So if you have like enlarged pores, I think this would look really nice. Honestly, looking at it now, it's a really good color match, right? But I'm starting to see how, because I matched to the more like slightly darker parts of my face, um, this is definitely, this would, is my face in the summer when I get a little bit of color. The puff is so fucking huge, so I don't think it'll be easy to get into under my dark circle or under my eyes, so I'm gonna use a brush. You know what, actually, these colors will look so good for Fili like Southeast Asian people because like I'm thinking like Indonesian or like Filipino people or even Indian people because um, they have a very like, what's the word, emehan? I feel like a lot of Western foundations can look so yellow or orange on them when they'll have like medium to medium darker skin tones, but they're very neutrally. They're not like yellow or red. Hmm. You know, I really, hmm, I feel like I'm, I'm between the first and second color. This is definitely my, my, would be my summer shade. It just, for me in person, it looks almost. Surprisingly, there is no foundation. So I guess they made this to sort of be like, oh, it sets itself and that's how it feels. <gasps> oh my God, look at that. And there's no the marks. That tells me it sets well and there's no excess like oil or some shit in there to kind of like make it all greasy. Okay, be ready. Let's try their brow pencil, the Be Ready Pride Up Eyebrow. I love the fact that it has a brush as most brow pencils do, but also it has both pencil and powder. So of course we have the pencil, like the typical sort of triangle shaped brow pencil, but here not too many brands have is of the powder end, which I think is so convenient because I do like to, I don't know, depending on your eyebrow type and the kind of like hair that you have around your brows, sometimes I think powder is better than like a pencil because one, you kind of have to be a little bit skilled when using pencil, but some people don't even need to like draw in hairs and they really just need to add like a shadow to more sparse areas. For me, these days, I don't like doing my brows besides eyebrow gel. I have the type of brows that can very easily look done up if I put even a little bit of pencil. But for this video, I am gonna use this. You see how the front part of my brow looks more dark and thick? Here, it looks sparse, right? This is where I would put the brow powder. You would use the powder to give you the overall shape and also tip with these sorts of things. You get a lot of product on there, so you do need to spread out the product on the back of your hand so you don't get like too much when you first put it on. Yeah, this is just to get the initial like shadow for your brow. You don't really, <laughs> You don't really need to get too precise with that. Then using the spoolie, just brushing that out. And then using the pencil to get more precision. 
Oh my god, this is bringing me back to like my 2015 eyebrow. <laughs> but a lot of Korean dudes will, this is like the brow shape they tend to go for. Actually, a lot of guys are getting their eyebrows tattooed these days because they can't be bothered to do the whole pencil thing. And they just leave the trust in the brow artist to kind of like give them the shape that suits them face the most. But honest to god, I feel like a, a lot of the time it looks too strong for their face. That's why lately for me, I've been so into just giving myself a brow perm, or I guess in the West they call it a brow laminate. Those don't really set my brows up. It's just to soften up the eyebrow hair so that I, it's more easy for me to kind of brush through with a brow spoolie and it will stay up that way. That's why I've just been doing that and then using clear brow gel. Cause I just think it looks more natural and flattering. Oh girl, that, see, you see how that, those brows look so fucking strong on me. Um, they only have this one color and I guess the whole concept of this brand is just assuming that this is for the dude that doesn't color his hair. It's like, wants to be super natural, doesn't do much. I guess not like the idly type or anything. Girl, those boys in Hongdae that do the bus game, they need to use this foundation because I, I really be seeing someone up in there with like, like mask, mask, and then like red fucking lip. To, oh, yeah, do you see how like, I look like Changu? I look like uh, Angry Birds. It's not for me necessarily, but um, I think it's a nice addition to have it because it is good for those people that only really have hair at the front. And then uh, actually a lot of guys in Korea, I've noticed towards the back end, it's like, all spread out and the, color, the hair's super thin and like there's no hair there. So I think it would take a little bit of practice, especially for those that aren't experienced with using eyebrow pencils. But I think this type of product, having both the powder and the pencil, um, if you just practice it, you can get a really nice looking brow with it. And sorry, I keep looking over here. I have a monitor over here. They also have an eyeshadow palette. Okay. This is the Mood Up Eye Palette for Heroes. Okay, be ready. I love the names. Bagel Boy, Swan Beige, Brave Brickin. Muscle brown. Try muscle bottom. I love the fact that they came out of this. I think this would be, I, this whole brand, I think would be so cute for those boys that would be buskin in Hongdae and they want a little bit of color on the eyes. Um, and I do think it looks really pretty when um, even like regular guys have a little bit of coloring around the eyes because I've talked about this many times on my makeup videos where I do like to keep the natural coloring around the eyes because I think it's really pretty. Even the dark circles, I don't try to cover them too, too heavily, too much. That's why you don't see me shoving conceal all the way up here because um, keeping a little bit of that coloring around your eyes, especially if you want a more natural look, um, it really plays into that natural vibe, right? So when people are like, oh, I want like a natural look today. So they like completely blank out their face and they add a little blush because they think that's natural. Keep some of the color around your eyes. That will give it even more of an impression of natural makeup. And so I guess with this, that's the whole kind of concept as well, um, is to kind of give you a little bit of that color back into your face, especially if um, you are using this base makeup all over and you're covering everything. I think I want something between these two colors. Let's see what you know about eyeshadow. Be ready. What you know. Okay, that's really fucking pretty. Usually, if you have a lot of darkness around the eyes, it tends to be more cool tone. So I guess this, uh, these kind of colors can kind of, kind of like warm it up a little bit, but not. it's not overly like yellow looking. Use a little bit of that red out here. That is really fucking pretty. Ooh, I like that. Sometimes when I try to get this sort of like natural redness around the eyes with other makeup or other eyeshadow palettes, I almost tend to go overboard and it starts to become like an eyeshadow look, which I really, like I wanna use all the colors and I'm afraid that's gonna happen if I try to use every single one. I am gonna use this at my lash line, just right here. Oh my God, that looks so good. That is such a good color, I think, just to kind of emphasize your lash line. And if you pull that out even just a little bit, you get this almost look of like, oh, like the effect of like a lot of eyeliner that kind of elongates your eyes, but without it looking like actual eyeliner. Y'all, this construction has been going on for the past two years, I think. And I'm so curious what the fuck they're making next to my house. I really hope it's a cafe because there's no like cute cafes like right next to my house. That is great. I love that. Good job, Be Ready. These colors are fantastic. The BM at over at Be Ready, thumbs up to you. I'm actually filming this much later, but I just realized that I wonder if this pan is bigger than the rest because it's for nose shading. And, and I looked at the fucking website and yes, they actually made this for nose contour. They said there's no red tones in this color, so it's good for contouring apparently. <laughs> oh shit, girl, what the fuck? That looks extremely natural. You can just kind of put it on the side of the nose and it kind of pushes the sides back and kind of really defines the center. That's really fucking nice. Well, I think I, I think I went overboard. I kind of gave myself a brown nose. <laughs> and then for lips, they actually do have a lip product that is a lip balm that has a little bit of color. This is the Be Ready Wake Up Vitalizing Lip Balm. 
And it's so cute because it has a little bee there, which I guess is for the color. My lips are looking dry as fuck right now. You know how sometimes if you wear a lip product, you get those little white bits on the corner of your mouth? In Korea, they call it yople. I've seen people call it yople, which is like the yogurt. And I think that's so fucking nasty. My lips are, I'm so sorry. My lips are so fucking dry. And then the color doesn't really come out. I swatched it right there. Do you see that? There's no color. I should have put this on at the fucking beginning. Ah, uh, come on. Now, now. This is embarrassing. I'm. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Okay, it's starting to come out now. That is so pale. Look at that. You know what's a good product for having, like, if you want, like, a lip balm or, like, a lip mask that has a tint to it? This product from Kaleidos, the Apple Glaze Lip Mask, is so good for this. In the pan, it looks dark as fuck. Kune, this color, when you put it on the lips, it's extremely sheer. It gives the prettiest flush to the lips. In general, I'm not really a big fan of this type of lip balm because I just feel like they are more drying than anything. It gives me flashbacks to EOS lip balms. That shit was just waxy as hell. Did not do anything for me and it was drying as fuck. Okay, so here's the tea. I wore a lip mask last night, so I got rid of a lot of that dead skin on my lips and I tried this again and it's actually kind of giving. I was looking at the ranks on Huawei and this is ranked number one on the men's like products. And to be honest, I can kind of see why. It's actually kind of cute. You just have to make sure your lips aren't dry like mine. I'll give it, I'll give it a six out of ten. I like the effect that it can give, but if I want to use a lip balm, it's because my lips are dry. But if this makes them look worse, if I have to prep my lips to use this, a lip, a fucking lip balm. One last makeup product, I think. This is the hairline cover stick for heroes, which um, the packaging looks like this. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's for your hairline. Honestly, I need that shit because my hairline, I'm starting, to, I used to have, this used to be a, such a big insecurity of mine, my hairline, like, because I have kind of like a bigger forehead, but I'm starting to be okay with it a little bit more now that I cut my hair. I would always try to cover it with my long hair, like with my bangs, but the one thing was that I don't really think I have a receding hairline or like an M-shaped forehead line, but clearly it's uneven. Oh, my face is fucking wonky as hell. So this comes in two colors. There's like a black one and this like the dark brown one. And you twist it up and in here you have like this spring that has the pigment in there and then you have this puff applicator. So I feel like this really only works in areas where it's more like not empty spots, but more like thinning spots. Because if you try to put it on straight up just bare skin, it's very obvious that you have some shit on there. Did that do anything? I can't tell. <laughs> Does my forehead look more even? No. I can't tell. Girl, what the fuck? I think this is made for those dudes that really like to have their hair up in like an up style, but they have kind of like an uneven hairline. And I don't think it really did anything. I can't tell though. Other skincare product is the One Shot Oil Foam Cleanser for Heroes. For this, they said like, oh, why do you need a two-step sort of cleansing when you can just do it in one shot? And that appeals to me. The fact that they, we don't have more stuff like this, I feel like, not that I know of, um, I'm surprised by. I guess because brands want to sell you more product, right? feels more like a gel, not really an oil. That feels dry as hell. What the hell? Look at that, it's like... Oh my god, that water? That was weird. My skin feels clean, but it turned into a foam, but it did not start out as an oil. But it doesn't feel dry at all. And it seems like all the makeup is off. Weird experience, but thumbs up for me. But in terms of the makeup, surprisingly, the sunscreen with the foundation is still looking fucking good. And despite, usually when I'm filming these videos, my body temperature starts to go up and it starts to affect the makeup wear. It gets like greasy or like also dry and cracked looking, but it's held up really well. Even around my nose area, that's where it tends to crack and get all nasty. But be ready, y'all really fucking did that. The base makeup is perfection. Lip balm, mm, don't know. The eyebrow pencil, I like it, but I would not use it in my daily life because it's just not my style these days. And the hair stick, mm, I was kind of excited for this, but I don't think it did much. Just because in general, it's not really pigmented. Like you get this, but I don't know. I feel like my, my hairline is kind of like eh, it's kind of like, unless I like went in individually, like in the eyebrow pen and individually drew hair marks, stuff like this probably wouldn't work for me. I'm just gonna live with my uneven ass fucking forehead. <laughs> but yeah, I think you should definitely check out the base makeup. They do have it on uh, all of your global store. Um, if you're having trouble finding KB stuff with like the proper undertone, or they even go to this depth of foundation color, 
um, I think you should really check it out. Whether you are a boy or a girl or any other gender. So I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.